Hello and welcome to Studio ABC. I'm Linda Ann. Today I'll be showing you how I turned a hot mess into a painting. Oh dear, I almost hate to look at this again. This is the hot mess that I made yesterday trying to work with a wipe-off sheet. Uh, there's some good areas in it. I can cut this up and make some other areas. I probably should have done some other things like darken a door and probably a lot of other things, but it just got out of control. It's not going to work and sometimes we all mess up. So I'm going to discard this one. Well, I'm not going to discard it. I don't believe in discarding. You either put dates on it and put it away and look at it later to see how you've progressed or you use it to make a better composition the next time you work. And that's what I'm doing now. So I'm placing the stencil where I want it. Again, it's upside down just like it was yesterday. And I'm going to start tracing the stencil so I'll know exactly where this castle is going to land in my composition. I think one of the best things that can happen from a painting turned bad is that you learn from it and or or that you see where you've come from at a later date. I think that's important too. But if you'd like to see where I messed up and how I went wrong, so wrong on that painting, then I'll put the link in the description box below along with some other links, my personal links and that sort of thing that you can refer to. Because even though it was a horrible painting, I decided to go ahead and let you all see what I did and what a mess I made because I hear so many people going, oh, it looks so easy for you. Well, sometimes that's because I've put in the work behind the painting to get there. And sometimes it flows off the brush, it works, and sometimes it's a disaster. The times when it most often becomes a disaster is when I try to force the paint to do what I want it to do instead of being the navigator, I need to be the passenger. I need to sit back and see what the paint wants to do and what it tells me it wants to do. A lot of the satisfaction in painting comes from getting to know your media, and that can even vary from one brand to another. Be assured that it can also come from the environment, like humidity. I'm using my round watercolor brush to wet the background around the castle. I'm going to put in the sky, and I have the earlier hot mess in my hand so that I can refer to it and see what I do and what I don't want to do to the painting this time. The faster I work with this water, the uh, more my color will flow whenever I start to dot in the color. Try to avoid cutting your page in half with a horizon line right in the middle. While I'm wetting about halfway down on this page, my horizon line will probably cover only about one-third. I'm wetting it more so I'll have soft edges, wet into wet. I'll be using Twinkling H2O's on this painting also, and the color I'm going to use for the sky is called Bio Blue. I'll drop in the color and I'll use the brush to maneuver it around, but I won't cover the entire thing because uh, wherever I leave white, it's going to be clouds in the sky, and one of the places I want to leave white is around near where that flag will fly on the top of the castle. If you'll watch closely as I put in the sky and then later when I'm going to put in some of the tree lines and that sort of thing, the grasses and everything, anytime I get a hard edge back in the background, I'm going to soften the bottom of it with a brush. Even though I put water uh, all over the page, I'm getting a few hard edges here and there. And I don't want hard edges in my clouds. I want them to look like soft little fluffy clouds. Sometimes it's appropriate to have a hard edge in the sky. It isn't appropriate for me right here. color I'll introduce is Key Lime, but I'll mix it with my Blue Bio. 
look out across the countryside as you're driving sometime and look how the atmosphere causes the further away it get, that the land goes from you, the bluer it gets. A little blue haze uh, can be on a mountain that when you get close to it doesn't look blue at all. So that is an atmospheric uh, involvement. It's the same blue that's in the sky and the blues that I'm mixing with my other colors. This is key lime, but as I go down, I'm mixing a little of that sky in with a little of my color that I'm adding to the canvas, or to the paper in this case. It's not a canvas. I'm actually working on a 140 pound watercolor paper that I stretched and taped to a board. Um, I'm finding that this kind of tape is not holding my paper as well as I want to and I get a lot of ripples and bumps. I'm going to try to investigate and see if I can get paper tape, craft paper tape. I'm going to investigate. I've already tried to get it at a few uh, stores, uh, craft stores and art stores. They don't even know what I'm talking about. But this is what we used to use all the time. It's a water activated tape. You wet your paper and you stretch it out and then you water activate the tape and seal it down to your board. And I'm looking for some of that. I never had a problem with that kind of tape way back in the 70s when I used to do a lot of watercolors. I never had a problem with that popping off my board. And I do have a problem with this occasionally. And I do have a problem with it not holding the paper tight against the board. You can see the buckles in it if you look closely. I'm softening those hard edges with another row of trees, but this time I have more key lime and less of the bio blue in uh, the mixture, and so it's a completely different color. When it's far away in the distance, don't try to paint each tree. Don't paint every tree trunk. Don't paint every leaf for sure. Just give a suggestion that it's there and let the viewer enjoy putting the picture together. It's sort of like writing. You do the same thing in writing. You don't tell the entire thing, understood things. Uh, the writer doesn't always put in things that are understood and lets the gives the viewer some credit for having some intelligence of fitting it together. Or I guess I should have said gives the reader in case of writing, but in our case, it's the viewer. I'm needing a little more pigment in some of the areas, and I'm just going to keep mixing paint until I come down and have a really, that really bright key lime color, almost pure, because I want it to look like a sunny day, and key lime's a really bright lime green color. A round brush with a really good point on it is your best friend in watercolors. I'm doing this whole painting with it. Um, this doesn't have quite as good a point on it as some of the better brushes, but it's what I have available. And I'm going to use it to go back around the building and clean up some of the edges in a few moments. I also want to refer back to my disaster painting and make sure that I'm not headed in the same direction. And I do want to kind of put in that same little road leading out from the door. I'm not putting in a moat. I didn't have a moat in this one either. But I like the way those flowers led your eye into the painting. Back when I did a lot of travel in Europe, I was just fascinated with their castles. There were all kinds of shapes and sizes, and they'd just be dotting the countryside in some places just appear out of nowhere. And so I have never quite gotten over some of the beautiful castles that I got to visit while I was there. I was even fortunate enough to have a friend that had a work crew that we would go check on the work crews uh, with an Italian friend. And I got to go into a castle that they were working on that was off limits to the public. So I felt like I was extremely fortunate. I can't even remember the city that was in now. I do remember one particular restaurant that was a castle. It was in a castle. It was called Castello di Sorci, and I loved eating there. They had some of the most outrageously good food. Served family style. They brought big uh, platters and bowls of food to your table. 
Castillo de Sorci was known for its ghost. It means castle of the ghost. I'm going to change to a color now called cinnamon stick and I'll be putting in the road and some of the castle with that. I'll lead your eye into the castle with a color called pink anthurium and when it mixes into the green it kind of changes colors it's not quite so pink I went back to the color cinnamon stick again with a nice light wash and, and a, a touch of key lime.
Well, this is significantly better than my hot mess. So I'm pleased with the time that I spent here. I'm glad that I went back and revisited this little castle because I never would have been happy with the other one. Here's the hot mess. What do you think? Did I learn anything? I'd rather look at the new one. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up on this video. Share it on your social media. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. I have all of my links down in the description box below the video. I'd love to hear your comments on this video. And look up Studio ABC, spelled S-E-E, -E, on Facebook. Come and join us for all the fun that we're having in there.